artist in that sense of the word. I am more of a visceral type of an artist. So I stopped painting altogether. Ten years later, I'm actually in, believe it or not, Asbury Park, New Jersey. And I'm at a fireworks show. And I'm waiting on the beach. And as opposed to most fireworks shows, which are like miles away here, it was above my head. And it was actually so visceral, you can actually keep, feel the, the, the explosion. I'm looking up. And right after the explosion, it was like retinal kind of thing, where everything was black and white. Right? And then the explosion's gone, really. But this, the thing is still like uh, vibrating in your eyes. And then you open your eyes, start to adjust, and you see that smoke kind of going like that. It's like, it's a landscape without a friggin' horizon on it. And I started doing drawings again, and started doing pastels and watercolors. And before I knew it, I was full fledged back and doing paint. So that was a treat for me to realize that there was still something left to be said about um, landscape painting, not so much in terms of like um, a, a horizon line with specific trees or lakes or anything like that, but all those formal elements were still there. You still had a subject matter. You still had lights and darks. You still had to push and pull from forward to backwards. You still have to deal with atmosphere. You're still dealing with all that stuff that are the elements of a landscaping. And I was off and running. So it um, took me about two years to create about 20 of these or so. Maybe two, maybe almost three years to do about 20. And uh, Savannah came by the open studios at CSV, AAI, in the Lower East Side. And she said, bring one. Uh, they haven't been, uh, haven't had a lot of exposure uh, other than this, and haven't really been actively showing anywhere. But um, I'm beginning to uh, think that it's time to start doing that. So uh, I just wanted to give you a little bit uh, of history of what it was all about, instead of just saying, "What do you see?" <laughs> um, you know, um, and, and there's, there's, I, I always find it a little bit more interesting to, to uh, talk about the. Formal uh, things that you know. Other, sometimes people just don't even think to ask, like, why are they square? Well, when you're dealing with uh, abstract things, if you do something that's horizontal, you're re referencing a landscape you know, just immediately, visually. If you do something that's up and down like this, you're referencing something that's figurative almost immediately. So you'll find most abstract artists will work with the square because you don't do that. It's neutral that way. Well, that's kind of interesting. <laughs> um, um, anyway, uh, any questions or anything about the, the painting process itself or it, anything like that? Um, you said you did about 20 or so. How did you choose three for this? How did I choose three? Um, I Scale? Did. <laughs> oh, okay. I think the curator did. Yeah, she picked one right. Really works. Uh, I think I, I decided, I think the only input that I had was I wanted to throw in one smaller one yeah. uh, just to break up the space a little bit. Um, but I think Savannah picked up the pieces. Oh, nice. Are these then really skyscapes? Hmm? Are these skyscapes? Yeah, I mean, if you yeah. want to put <coughs> that way, yeah. yeah. I mean, uh, uh, formally, they, they really are they exactly that. And is there, um, for you, any kind of psychic expression. I know when I started doing work where physically matter was lost within the process, the work also was about loss. For you, this explosive element, is there some mental state that you're conveying? Or is it purely like the interest in, in that? Just you know, the back room is set up with some chairs, too. So when you finish talking in, it can also sit in the back, too. So, no, uh, you know, the, the thing is, is that the, um, that that whole idea is sort of in place from the very beginning. Mm -hmm. I always felt that as a landscape painter, that I was dealing with something, uh, and it's a tradition of it, of course, of the abstract sublime. I am mm -hmm. not interested in. Except that after 9/11, you had a very different feeling about smoke and explosions. Mm -hmm. There's a little. There's. I'll get back to that. But we're talking about like the 
initial part of like why I was, I, mm -hmm. I was, it was always sort of a spiritual, a spiritual experience. I mean, okay, yeah. Because that's, that's, the deeper I go into myself, the more I find that that's, that's my cool. Mm -hmm. that's, that's really where, where it is for me. These are actually, if you want to think about them, and we've had this conversation, and I've even said it in my statement, these are a little perverse in the fact that they are based on the idea of explosions. And nowadays, you know, you can't, you can't see anything, you pretty much can't turn on the news without seeing something being fucking blown up, let's face it. Right. Right? It's on fire, it's smoking, you can't 9 11 here, it's, it's all this whole thing about, you know, explosions and smoke and all that stuff. The reason I say that these are perverse in that way is that the way I think I'm painting these things are very delicate, layers and layers and layers upon whites and beautiful grays and browns and all that kind of stuff. They're I'm creating well, what I hope is an actual beautiful object, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. Well, that's freaking perverse because it's, like, it's, it's, it's an explosion. Mm -hmm. So I'm, I'm, there, it's so there's a little. Uh, I, actually, only one person has actually come in and, and said that to me once before. And I'm Steve Mumford. You know the artist Steve Mumford. Mm -hmm. He's I like one. He's one of the few people that actually still goes to the battlefield and does watercolors. Oh, of course, I remember yeah. that. One. <laughs> you yeah, know, it's of like course. this guy has balls of steel, <laughs> yes, and, and he, a really good hand, <laughs> and, and an amazing artist. And he's still one of the few people that are. He's in. He's there now, from what I understand. And he's like, I mean, he's he's like, oh, here comes that tank again, you know, with like guys doing this, and he's like. <laughs> and we back and we come back to the city in the studio, which he's, he's at the CS, CSV building, as you know, and he's, and he's extraordinary. Anyway, he walked in and he looked at that for one second and said, that's friggin' perverse. And I, I said, and I looked at him and I said, why? He said, this is so beautiful and it's an explosion, isn't it? And I was like, absolutely right. And the reason he recognized it right away is that's what he's doing all the time. Mm. explosions. Mm. So his immediate, he had an immediate response to this thing that was totally visceral, mm -hmm. and he was dead on. Yeah, I, I can really see that. Yeah. I'm glad you made that association, because yeah. I wasn't in a very ethereal, lovely, lovely. But the destructive aspect, of course, is there. It's and I mean, personally, I don't know you very well, but you're like a pretty zen guy. You're pretty calm. <laughs> and so that's why I asked if, like, was there Lewis, some sort Lewis, of Lewis undercurrent? Right. Uh, yeah, right now, she's convinced, laughing right now. Linda's convinced I'm a million years old. She says uh, she's not the oldest soul she's ever met. Yeah. I, I, I'm not going to disagree with her. I, I, I'm, so I guess I for me there was that question <laughs> about the vicariousness of, like, relating to the destructive Yes, aspect. yes. Yeah. Yeah. And, and then ultimately saying beyond that. Because that's really kind of the thing. It's like, you know, if you really have that idea in your head that, that the, of the, the, the old soul sitting on top of the hill just kind of watching it all happen, mm -hmm. most of it's, 99% of it's horrendous. So where, where, is, where is that, that piece? It's because it's, it, it all happens again and again and again and again and again and again. It's, it's all part.